The tears flowed freely from your eyes when Roger Federer retired in September last year. It was the end of an era, but it left some fans wondering what the other players of Federer's generation were up to. For context, we are talking about his key contemporaries born between 1980 and 84. And here's what we found. Safin turned pro in 1997 and retired in 2009 when he was only 29. But for those 12 plus years on the tour, he became the world number one. Won two slams and 15 career titles. Shortly after his retirement, he moved into politics and was a member of the state Duma representing the United Russia Party from 2011 to 2017 before quitting politics to focus more on the commitments that came as a result of his induction into the Tennis Hall of Fame in 2016. Safin has been an official for the Russian Tennis Federation and a member of the Russian Olympic Committee. Although we don't see him so often on the circuit, he pops up every now and then, particularly at the French Open. We saw him at Australia in 2020, where he was sitting courtside at Russia's captain at the ATP Cup, supporting his compatriots. Safin has said that he doesn't follow sports or tennis so much and prefers to explore other things. But it's the other way around for this next player. From when he turned pro in 1998 until his retirement from singles in 2016, the Australian won two slams and reached the pinnacle of the ATP rankings. 2001 US Open men's singles champion, Leighton Hewitt. He won 30 singles titles and three more in doubles. Although he retired in 2016, his love for tennis never faded and he continued to play doubles until 2020. Hewitt runs commentaries at the Australian Open and is the team captain of the Australian Davis Cup team. The former world number one has also been leading the Albany Tennis Academy in the Bahamas. Last December, Hewitt sold his family home in Victoria and moved into a new home in Burley Heads, Queensland. One of the reasons for his move was rumored to be the need to consolidate his son's potential as a future top 10 player. The 13-year-old Cruz Hewitt won the Australian Junior Tennis Clay Court title in Canberra last year and is looking to follow in his father's footsteps, just like the Davidenkos. The former world number three retired in 2014 after 15 solid years on tour and was one of the best in the 2000s despite not winning a slam. Although he now leads a quiet life with his family, he still holds tennis dear to his heart. Davidenko doesn't really do much commentary, but he has tried his hands on coaching with fellow compatriot Karen Kachanoff, with whom he spent a few weeks. Currently, the 41-year-old coaches a group of kids around 9 to 11 years old, including his daughter. Having earned over $16 million in prize money throughout his career, Davidenko seems to have shifted his priorities to his family, which is what Fernando Gonzalez is also doing. Although he never won a major in his career, Gonzalez was a top five player in his prime and had one of the hardest forehands on the tour. From 1999 to 2012, the Chilean produced some memorable performances against top players. Since leaving the big stage 12 years ago, he has continued to work with the Chilean Tennis Federation and has been coaching his compatriot, Gonzalo Lama. He decided to focus more on family in 2017 and has been in a relationship with retired Argentine field hockey player, Luciana Amar, with whom he has two kids. Gonzalez chose to relocate to Miami with his family in July. Anyway, we've got a few players who've decided to switch sports post-retirement. No doubt, if he had good shoulders, the former world number three Nelbandian could have done more in his career. The Argentine retired in 2013, but picked up rally racing. He is featured in the Argentine Rally Championship and has even made appearances in the Cotasur South American Rally Championship and in the World Rally Championship. But as with most other tennis players, you can't just take away the sport from them completely. So in 2021, he was hired as a coach by Ketch Manovic. Nelbandian also does some coaching at home, working with the top tennis training YouTube channel on video courses. And then we've got Marty Fish, who overtook Andy Roddick to become the top ranked American player in 2011. After retiring in 2015, Fish took his golfing career to the next level. Currently, he is one of the best celebrity golfers and is among the favorites at the American Century Championship in Lake Tahoe, a tournament he won in 2020. 
As for tennis, Fish started the Marty Fish Children's Foundation and has been active on the Invesco series QQQ tennis circuit. And it's my turn to do the same for children. My message today is all about seeking your support. In 2019, he replaced Jim Courier as captain of the United States Davis Cup team, and in 2021, shared his story on the Netflix docuseries Untold Breaking Point. Looks like he's got a lot on his plate, just like his compatriot, Andy. Still the greatest American player of the 21st century, the former world number one has since gone into punditry and commentary work, been heavily involved in buying property to rent out, which he started in 2008, and runs his Andy Roddick Foundation in Austin, Texas. Roddick has angel invested into dozens of businesses with his wife and business partner following his retirement in 2012. Who's next? Another former world number one. Ferrero had an enviable career. He won a slam, reached the zenith of the rankings, and made about $14 million in prize money, among other impressive feats. He retired in 2012, but made a brief comeback in 2017 while playing doubles at the Barcelona Open. Afterward, he coached Alexander Zverev, but it didn't quite work out. But who is he coaching now? Carlos Alcaraz. <laughs> If they could rack up six titles last year, there's no telling what the duo might achieve in the near future. Ferrero also owns a tennis academy and a hotel in Spain. The Spaniard was one of the finest players around 2009-2010. Now 39 and nowhere near his prime, he's still very much active on the tour and plays well from time to time. Although he recently got banned for two months for making a silly mistake of not renewing his therapeutic use exemption of methylphenidate, I'm sure he'll be back soon for a last dance. Ferrer is one of the most successful players of Roger Federer's generation. He retired in 2019 with 27 singles titles and a slam final appearance. He was recently named the Spanish Davis Cup captain for the next three years. Ferrer has also been the director of the Barcelona Open since his retirement, and he plays a supportive role in his brother's tennis academy. Safe to say, he can't let go of the sport just yet. Mayer was another top 20 player who scored wins over some of the best players such as Nadal, Murray, Team, Ferrer and Soderling. The German retired in the US Open in 2018 after 17 years on the tour. Mayer is living a quiet life in Austria. You may not remember Maya, but the chances are that you would remember Robin Soderling as the first player to defeat Rafael Nadal at the French Open. <laughs> Although mononucleosis put an end to his high-flying career prematurely in 2011, the former top five player hasn't stopped loving the sport. After his retirement in 2015, he coached Elias Hema for a while before captaining the Swedish 2021 Davis Cup finals team. The Swede currently lives in Stockholm with his family. We've got his countrymen on the list too. Johansson reached the semi-finals of the US Open in 2004, broke into the top 10 and won three singles titles throughout his career, but persistent injuries prevented him from reaching his full potential. He retired in 2008 after just eight years on the tour, and although he came back, he was a shadow of his former self and just faded into thin air. Shortly after his retirement, he was a consulting coach for the Swedish Tennis Federation. Since his retirement, he has been managing several businesses, including one that develops the talents of young tennis players. Usni was another top 10 player who made it to the quarterfinals of all slams, going a step further at the US Open. After his retirement in 2018, he set his sights on coaching. He was hired by Denis Shapovalov and has remained a part of his team. Last year, he released a book about tennis as a game and profession. Yuzny has done a lot of traveling recently and is one of the more active players of his generation on social media, like this next guy. Only a few people are enjoying their retirement more than the Argentine. The former world number 10 retired in 2017. Skipped to 2020, he was already engaged to his longtime girlfriend. Last year, they welcomed their baby and tied the knot. He also spends some time of his on Summer Sport, an entertainment initiative he co-founded. Moving over to Spain, I've got two top guys for you. Just like Federer, Robredo began his professional career in 1998 and retired this year. That ends a great career. The Spaniard called time on his career at the Barcelona Open after almost 900 games. The former world number five remains the only player in Open era history to mount three consecutive comebacks from two sets down. 
and we won't easily forget him on the tour. A new chapter has arrived for Robredo, who welcomed his first child in March 2021. He has said that he'll be dedicating himself to his family and daughter, but he didn't rule out the possibility of being involved in tennis again. Robredo is also heavily involved in wheelchair tennis, running the Open Anti-Silvers. One of the greatest late bloomers of all time, we thought this guy was never going to retire, but all things must come to an end. Amid the New Year buzz, he announced that he won't be on the tour for the new season. 25 years on the tour, a top 15 ranking, a slam in doubles, it's been a remarkable ride for the 41-year-old Spaniard. Let's check out the few players left. The Belgian was a top 20 player at his peak and won the French Open in doubles. He first retired in 2013 after about 15 years on the tour, but came back in 2016 and in 2021 to play doubles. After retiring in 2013, Melisse assumed a coaching role and worked with fellow Belgian Kimmer Kopijans. But the partnership was short-lived and Melisse admitted he had rushed into coaching too quickly. For now, the 42-year-old looks to be having a lot of fun playing doubles. Seppi retired shortly after Federer did in October last year. He was the first Italian to win a title on all three surfaces. After a career that lasted almost two decades with wins over Federer, Nadal and Wawrinka, the Italian called it a day. With no concrete plans for his retirement at the moment, he stated that being a full-time coach was not part of his plans and that he would be at his home in Boulder, Colorado while his kids continue their education. In his prime, no one came close to Correa on clay court. Unfortunately, he ended his nine-year professional career in 2009 at the age of 27. The following year, he began to coach his younger brother Federico. Correa welcomed his kids in 2012 and 2013 after almost nine years of marriage and as of 2016, he was traveling around Argentina managing the government-funded program Our Tennis, where he helps to develop talents in children and teens. Early last year, he made his debut as the new captain of the Argentina Davis Cup team. Talking about Davis Cup captains, we've also got Giles Muller. Still the most successful male tennis player from Luxembourg, Muller's powerful left-handed serve brought him just shy of the top 20. He retired in 2018 with two titles and two quarter-final appearances at slams. Following his retirement, he was appointed as Luxembourg's Davis Cup team captain. Quick but easy question, why do many retired players become Davis Cup captains? Remember Mahut, the guy who set the record for the longest match in tennis history with John Eisner? Sporting embrace between these two fantastic combatants. Well, he competed the Korea Grand Slam in the doubles category in 2019, having become the world number one in doubles a few years earlier. Where is he now? Sweating it out on the court. The Frenchman is still playing at 40, unlike his compatriot, Lodra. This video wouldn't be complete without including the best volleyer on tour. The talented Frenchman had a decent singles career, but was much more successful in doubles, winning slams before retiring in 2014. Where is Lodra now? Probably somewhere in France. And then we have Janko Tipsarevic, a former top 10 player who retired in 2019. The Serbian now spends more time parenting, being a DJ and supporting FC Barcelona. And there's Jarko Niemenem, who retired in 2015. He's now captaining Finland's men's national team and running commentaries at the Finnish Eurosport during Grand Slam tournaments. A generation overshadowed by Roger Federer, and to some extent, the other members of the big three. Many of these players have followed similar paths, turning to their family, pursuing other interests, or remaining active with new roles in tennis. In some way, their careers put Roger Federer's greatness into perspective, seeing that he dominated the best players in his generation emphatically and outlasted almost all of them. But where are the stars of the 90s? Only one way to find out.